In today's video, I discuss where gut issues usually start. Roll the titles. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Before I jump into the video, just a quick reminder that I'm now offering the SIBO, organic acid, stool tests and consult via my website. So if you have any health or digestive problems, then consider taking these tests as they will provide a lot of very detailed information upon which you can start making informed decisions and then start getting your health back on track. And on that bombshell, to the video. So I wanted to make a very quick video on hypochloridria or low stomach acid because for many people this is the missing piece of the jigsaw to get their digestive health moving in the right direction. So in this video I will cover off some of the main problems associated with low stomach acid in terms of its impacts on digestion but I also want to discuss the wide ranging impacts that low stomach acid can have across your whole body. Now for many people with GERD, heartburn, abdominal bloating and cramping they have no idea that their symptoms are actually being driven by a lack of stomach acid and not the overproduction of stomach acid that conventional medicine would have us believe. And as a result, many people are caught in a cycle of using over-the-counter antacids on a very regular basis or prescribed acid blockers such as proton pump inhibitors. Now, if you do this on a regular basis, it has the very real potential to destroy your digestive health and also your overall health. So what I want to do in this video is to give you the most common symptoms that could potentially be telling you that you have a low stomach acidity problem. So number one is bloating or gas, especially straight after meals. Or alternatively, you could be experiencing abdominal tightness or that feeling of being extremely full. Now this could just be that you've eaten a very large meal or it could be a sign that your stomach acid is low. And if you get these symptoms on a regular basis and they are impacting on your quality of life, then you also want to rule out things like SIBO, etc. But if the gas and bloating are intermittent, then it could just be a sign of low stomach acidity issues. Indigestion and acid reflux could also be a sign that you have low stomach acid problems. Reflux is when you get food or acid traveling back up your throat from your stomach and you get that awful acidic taste at the back of your mouth. Indigestion symptoms would include things like abdominal pain, growling stomach, and also belching and gas. Next up is undigested food in your stool. So if you see food in your stool that is still intact and not broken down, then this could be a sign that you are having low stomach acid problems. Some really other common low stomach acid problems are constipation, abdominal cramping, foul smelling gas, and also pungent foul smelling breath could also be a sign that you have low stomach acid. So what we've discussed so far have been the typical symptoms that could be clues that you are suffering with low stomach acid, but how do you accurately test and diagnose low stomach acid or hypochloridria? So there are a number of ways that you can measure stomach acidity, either directly or indirectly. Indirectly will simply involve speaking to your doctor regarding all of your symptoms and assume that there is a correlation between your symptoms and low stomach acid. And you can also test directly by looking at certain tests such as blood tests, or you could do a urine endocrine test, also known as the Obermeyer test, and you can do this test through your doctor, nutritionist or dietitian. Now, if you don't have access to a doctor, dietitian or nutritionist, then there is a simple test that you can do at home using hydrochloric acid and bicarbonate of soda. And I've done a video up here, so be sure to check it out. Now, if you are looking at blood tests, then common telltale signs of low stomach acid would be very low levels of chloride. Other markers should also be evaluated, such as total globulin, bicarbonate, blood urea, nitrogen, anion gap, and also mean corpuscular volumes, also known as MCV. If you've got a complete blood test recently, you will probably see your MCV next to what's called your MCH and your MCHC, and these will provide useful indicators that you have low stomach acid problems. Now, as I said earlier, if you have stomach acid issues and you regularly take antacids or proton pump inhibitors, it can have wide ranging impacts on your overall health. So for example, there is growing evidence that those who regularly take antacids or proton pump inhibitors have significantly higher rates of osteoporosis. These types of medication also appear to increase the rates of bone fractures, as well as causing quite high rates of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, as these types of medications can alter your gut motility or the speed at which your food and feces will travel through your intestines. These types of medications can also impair nutrient absorption, reduce immune function, and in some specific forms of cancer, they can increase risk. Now that you know all of these symptoms and the tests that you can do, what can you do to fix the problem I hear you scream at the screen? And this is where it becomes slightly complex, so I would suggest that you speak to a trained professional. 
Now, as I always say on this channel, stomach acidity is interconnected to pancreatic enzymes, bile production, and also your gut motility. Now, some people will say, well, I might just take hydrochloric acid and some digestive enzymes and fix the problem that way. But the thing to remember is that if you have other digestive problems at play, then these supplements can often do a lot more harm than good. A much simpler test that you can do is to take some hydrochloric acid or two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar 20 minutes before a meal, and if your gas and bloating and other digestive issues improve slightly, then you know you're on the right path. Equally, if you get a worsening of reflux type symptoms after taking the hydrochloric acid or apple cider vinegar, then there are probably other issues at play that need to be addressed. The most important point to this video though is not guess and throw different supplements at a problem if you don't know what is causing the problem as it will probably make things much worse. Work with someone who can guide you through the process and test and help you regain your digestive health. By all means try apple cider vinegar or hydrochloric acid if you have low levels of digestive problems but anything more significant then speak to someone who knows what they are doing. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed and as always remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time.